uh, Europe mostly up, Asia mostly down. Let's just call this a flattish open. You see that split open that uh, Carl was referencing. Let's take a look, and you, you can see why, because not a lot of clear directions. Market leaders been semiconductors recently, flattish healthcare, flattish here, consumer staples here. Let, a tenth of a point is fairly flattish open, and materials here. So not a lot of divergence between the highs and the lows today. Uh, broad rally, though, overall. Remember, we're ending the month here. What, the S&P up 2.7, 2.8%. Uh, Equal-weighted index is up almost as much. So if you take a look here, technology's been the key leadership group, but we also have strength in consumer staple stocks uh, that are up 4%, besides tech. Banks are also up 4%. This is the leadership, kind of an odd group, trio of, of uh, sectors to have the leadership. Uh, industrial is also up. Healthcare is lagging. Energy is also lagging down about 1.5%. But overall, this is a fairly broad rally. I think the important thing is what's moving the markets. The three factors that were moving the markets last month are essentially what's moving it today. The dovish central banks and the belief the Fed's going to continue to cut rates, even if it's only a quarter basis point, there'll be more indications that... Uh, that there will be indications more are coming. Second half earnings are not collapsing. They are still coming down a little bit, but flattish is still the key word here. There's no wholesale. Two months ago, there was bears out saying we're going to have a wholesale decline in estimates for the second half of the year. That has not happened so far. And no blow up in China trade. Notice I said no blow up. It's no longer, you don't need to say we're going to have an imminent trade deal. The market seemed perfectly happy with just ongoing negotiations now. So you don't have to have an imminent victory. Just they're keeping talking and nothing is blowing up seems to be sufficient for the market. This is a sort of a change in the attitude over a couple months ago. I think you should note that in terms of the China trade and what's going on. Overall, the market, though, for me, it's amazing how little is oversold. You keep saying, well, 17 and a half forward earnings, but not a lot of stuff is ridiculously over, oversold right now. The S&P is at a historic high, but the advanced decline line, which is the most important thing that I watch, is still at new highs. That's an indication the market is healthy right now. Volatility, I'm not seeing big sell pressure out there from anything right now. That's another key to how the market's doing. What's missing? We're not getting a lot of new highs. I'd like to see a few more. I'd like to see a lot more breakouts, a few hundred here at the NYSE. That's not happening, but that's quibbling. Uh, what's remarkable is if you take a look, is there any frothiness out there? A little. The semis are a little frothy. I mean, look, Micron up 20 percent, KLA, Tencor, and uh, the um, semiconductor capital equipment names all up rather strongly, but dramatically oversold? No, not yet. Anything really doing well? How about the IPO market? I know it hasn't been exciting in the last few weeks, but the IPO ETF we watch, historic high again today. Look at that move up, 44% or so on the year for the historic high. The important thing here is we're hitting breakouts in a lot of these names. For example, Uber over 45, once again today, over its initial price.